So just now, the post-launch trailer for AC Valhalla has had a trailer released, so I thought why not analyse it, and then at the end I'll give my thoughts on it. And if you do want to see the trailer for yourself, I'll link it in the description. So without further ado, let's get into this, starting with the major expansions, and as you could have guessed, there are two of them. The first of these is the Wrath of the Druids, coming out in spring 2021, set in Island, which is great. That's the setting I wanted to see most from the season pass, and this is the more mythological DLC, judging by Origins and Odyssey, and this is that, but not near to the extent of Curse of the Pharaohs or Fates of Atlantis, it would seem. You're fighting this druid cult in the DLC, hence the name, and it's emphasised this one is shrouded in a lot of mystery. You get to influence a local settlement, and it's probable that this DLC is going to give us the east coast of Ireland, since we get to explore Dublin, which is so cool. And this, to me, is the most exciting AC DLC since Dead Kings, purely because it's Ireland, which is really nice. Expansion 2 is the Siege of Paris, and that's coming summer of 2021, which is very heavy on the Viking raiding sort of stuff, naturally. And we got this one piece of concept art featuring Eivor looking over Paris in seemingly some new robes, which looks so cool, and I'd guess this is the more assassin-esque DLC, judging by that screenshot, at least I'd hope so. And the fact the island one is about this cult, I guess the assassins have something to do with this one. As by the end of the story, when Eivor is an assassin, going on these big Viking conquests would surely be to serve the assassins in some sense, otherwise, like, why? And it's said that we'll try and conquer Paris from the inside, making various alliances. And this guy we're stood with does look like an assassin, so... I'm hoping this is an assassin-centered DLC. What I'm interested in is what's done with the lore here, because there's for sure going to be some stuff that comes up again in Unity. Maybe we'll come across the Sword of Eden, that specific Sword of Eden we know is in Paris as of Jacques de Molay's time, or the Crypts. What I'd love to see is Eivor and these assassins influencing the Parisian assassins. The Parisian assassins are quite similar to the Levantines in how organized they are, and since the Hin ones are bridging over to the Levantines, we could definitely see that branch of the assassins being form. And I'd love to see that because that's one of the most fascinating elements of Unity to me. And to sort of end this section off, I think it's important to take note of the fact the Siege of Paris began in 885, which is 12 years after Valhalla starts. Having these two DLCs set around these two really interesting bustling locations is really cool. Like seeing the concept art of Paris, I'm just thinking about how cool it'd be using social cell there and sneaking through these major locations. And these locations should get more focus than the cities in the main game, since Valhalla is focusing on most of a country in the main game, as opposed to part of a country including a city. Where in the case of the Siege of Paris, it seems like it's just one city, which is so cool. Like Origins and Odyssey, I'd expect the first DLC, the Wrath of the Druids, to be the smaller one, and the Siege of Paris to be the bigger one. Also, it's not been announced they'll be episodic like Odyssey's DLC, which is great, as that hurts the pacing, like, so much, and it's just better to have the whole thing there. And then, as you'd expect, we're told you'd get these two with the season pass, and either of the additions that include that. And if you want a video about the additions of the game, if you don't know which to buy, I'll link my video from back in May about that. But you'll definitely be able to buy them singularly as well. Now we get a bit of talk about the bonus mission, The Legend of Beowulf, which you get included in both of those additions, Gold and Ultimate Edition. But as I remember, there was a similar thing with the Blind King mission in Odyssey and Secrets of the First Pyramids in Origins, where you're just able to get them on Uplay afterwards. So if you don't want to get those those editions and you are interested in this, you should be able to get it afterwards, like, I'd guess so. And this is about some beast, or it's believed to be a beast, causing havoc for local villagers who we're going to have to hunt down. And that is available on launch. Next, we get told about the free seasonal content, which is only really comparable to the Trial of the Gods, where it's these free scheduled events, but they seem far bigger and are spread further apart with the earliest one taking place at the end of this year and the fourth and final one taking place fall of next year. The first of these seems to be a Christmas-related one, the Yule Festival. That seems sick. That takes place in our settlement, and that's all we really know about it, and that's dropping in December. After that, we're apparently getting new game modes, and that's their wording, first of all, not mine. There are these river raids, which seem to be like standard Viking raids we've seen before, except there's far more risk for reward, and it uses the Yom's Viking rule. Which, if you don't remember, was that feature where you and your friends could share custom Vikings for each other to hire. The interesting thing for me is this guy says that that's all the seasonal content you can expect in the first year, implying there'd be a second. And if there is, 
that is really cool considering this is free content and would surely expand the game's lifespan. And then lastly, it's confirmed there will be a discovery tour for the game, just like Origins and Odyssey had, which is great, but there's no date for that or really any details. So to recap, The Wrath of Beowulf will come out at launch, late this year we'll get the Yule Festival, the first seasonal event, spring next year we'll get The Wrath of the Druids DLC, the DLC set in Ireland, in summer The Siege of Paris, then Presumably the Discovery Tour. As I say, we don't know the date, but I'd guess that's when that would be. So, is this good? Well, it depends, right? Ubisoft are so adamant about marketing the Viking fantasy, and I always do keep in mind that Ubisoft will always market that more than the AC stuff, so my hopes here are really that this is more assassin related than the marketing team are letting on. Like Wrath of the Druids, probably not. But the Siege of Paris looks like it could do a lot with pre-established lore. Like the DLCs really should flesh out whatever version of the Assassins we're left with, rather than just being more epic Viking action. Like I really thought Avil's journey would be Edward-esque, but no. If they're still going about being a mental Viking, and there's no good reason for that, Ubisoft have missed so many opportunities like they've fucked up massively. Like it's at a point where I'm actively looking for assassin stuff in the trailer rather than being told it's there and selling me on it. And this is what the post-launch content is being marketed on, epic Viking shit. So you know, this is cool, Ireland is the finest country on earth, Paris is great, but please do something with, you know, the title franchise, Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft, please sort it out for this humble AC YouTuber, if for nobody else. But anyway, there's that. As I said, the trailer is in the description if you would like to watch it for yourself. If you enjoyed, maybe leave a like, and if you didn't, maybe let me know why. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time in another Assassin's Creed video.